These are raisin oatmeal. And the Krispy Kreme's underneath? No. And okay. there's cheese and crackers in case you want cheese and crackers. Oh, that's very kind. I think we'll be good. Okay. Um, we have to, pardon me, Internet Universe, I'm going to walk right in front of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly. Can I move closer to him? Yeah, actually, I think that would be great. Okay. That's perfect. That way you're both, like, kind of right in the center of the shot. Um, so, you were saying, you were working in New York Investment Bank. How we met. Yes. Start from the top. Well, you call me on the phone. Why? Because you are having an employment problem. Mm -hmm. And who were you with at the time? I was with the uh, DOD. At the Department of Defense. Mm -hmm. But you were giving advice in what capacity? In my capacity as an employer uh, in the employee, employee committee now. New York now. Member of the employee committee in New York. And I was working in an investment banking firm in New York City on Wall Street. And I was a municipal bond analyst. Hmm. And um, that division was comprised of, I think, about six to seven, eight women, maybe. This is the early 70s. And uh, the real action in the money at that period of time was to be on the trading floor. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had asked management if I could become a person who would sit for the exam at the New York Stock Exchange to become a certified bond analyst. Mm -hmm. And of course they said, oh no, Carol, we can't do that for you. We'll send you to school to have you learn how to fix the Xerox machine in case it breaks down. And I said, well, I don't want to be a uh, Xerox machine operator for mm -hmm. a copy operator. I want to become registered as a bond analyst because then I can make more money. Mm -hmm. And they refused. This was the start of the, the desire to get some employment advice. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that I found, and I should say that the trading floor was comprised of predominantly men. If there were a few, they were not in the municipal bond division. And that division was headed by a man whose name was William Simon. And it was a very macho environment, again, mm -hmm. early 70s. Mr. Simon went on to become the uh, Secretary of the Treasury of the United States. Another thing that raised concerns was when uh, I asked also to attend the weekly Friday meetings where they would talk about the macroeconomic forecasts of where interest rates would be the following week, trends in the economy, what to look for, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I had to ask permission to do that repeatedly. And I'm sitting in the back room with the ladies working on the analysis of municipal bond prospectuses. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to be offering 100 million bonds of XYZ uh, funded by the tax revenues from Pennsylvania, and we would go through, analyze it, and work up a summary, and then that would be discussed as a new offering, and then it would be disseminated to potential investors of the firm. I had to ask repeatedly a number of times to get permission to attend this meeting. When it would obviously make sense contextually for you all That's to correct. know that. That's yeah. correct. Well, what was your, you had a degree at the time, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, Master's in Finance or something? At the time, I hold, held an MBA. And another thing that really raised concerns, and this is to put it mildly, is there a cat? No, I was just, just watching your dog. So. Uh, the cats may <laughs> jump in every so often. That's fine. Uh, when bonus time came around, I swear Billy Simon came into our back room office and said to the ladies that we were all going to get bonuses. And then he went on to say, but it's unfortunate that you're not men because men are going to get more. Said it out loud. Mm-hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm I remember this is the 70s. So, of course, then I had all of these concerns, and I had heard about the National Organization for Women, but at the time, I thought that they were nothing more than the Junior League with mm -hmm. fashion shows and things like that. I don't know quite how I got in touch with now in New York City to ask about what my rights were, but they put me onto the Employment Committee, and one of the counselors was John. 
So you went through, you know, these are the, the laws, these are the regulations, and don't quit. And that statement was, fight from within, not from without. Mm -hmm. But at the time, it was just very difficult to stay in that environment. Um, but what I did do was, uh, again, with counseling from the Employment Committee of NOW, I, I believe you recommended going to the New York City Commission on Human Rights, Civil Rights, who was chaired at the time by Eleanor Holmes Norton. And I filed a suit alleging sex discrimination on the basis that I was being uh, paid less than a man, was being dissuaded from getting certified as a municipal bond analyst because I was raising legal issues. How could anybody take us seriously if you don't have the certification? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and I learned at the time that I was the second sex discrimination case filed with Eleanor Holmes Norton and the City Commission on Civil Rights. The first one was a man who wanted to be a secretary in an investment banking firm in Wall Street, mm -hmm. and they were trying to channel him into the trading department. Huh. So yeah. I was the second one yes. asking for just the different routes. Mm -hmm. And uh, th that's when I got involved with, with now quite actively and had all of those prior beliefs that they were nothing more than the junior league Wiped away. Wiped away. Wiped yeah. away. Wiped away. Well, that was the public. That was sort of the, the news about them, right? The way that the public discourse was framed around feminism, around now, was that it was. Well, it's even worse than that because, again, if you're trying to uh, work out a career, uh, and I just had a newly minted MBA, um, you were just very busy trying to make it. And in those days, we had also going on the Vietnam War. And I remember uh, agitating a little bit. You know, they called for demonstrations. There were demonstrations on Wall Street. I remember there was a call to wear black bands on your, on your coat or your suit yeah. to honor the war dead. And I did all of that. And uh, there must have been something in that personality where, because I didn't know about now and what it stood for, nor what, a work, what its work was, mm -hmm. it took a little time to get into it. Um, they demonstrated on the anniversary of the 19th Amendment, the 26th of August. And I don't know, did you demonstrate before you met me? Okay. Because he was with the federal government. You have to be very careful yeah. about what you do. Uh, but I do remember that it kind of heated up now, this isn't the first time this happened. Um, I had a prior job in investment banking, uh, but that was what they called the Gal Friday, mm -hmm. where in those days you had mimeograph machines, and I sat on corporate bond desk. There were about eight men, and every so often there would be an offering come, and I would write it up, take it to the mimeograph, spin it off, and then distribute it. That was my job for $110 a week. Wow. And it was really fun. I learned a lot, etc. Mm -hmm. But what was interesting, meeting what few women there were in Wall Street at the time, um, we found to our horror that in those days there were restrictions, unwritten restrictions against women taking lunch between the hours of 11.30 and 2.30 on a work day because women make noise while men were there to do business. The other thing, and it, I wasn't politically sensitive about mm. sexual politics or anything like that, um, but the other thing that caused a lot of concern was um, the culture in those days, and I guess it still is true today, after work, after five, you would segue to the local bar mm. before you took your train home, have a few drinks with your colleagues and talk about the market and whatever, and then go home. Uh, yeah. Well, we found <laughs> very clear images of my my dad doing this in the seventies, my grandpa doing this. Thing. Yeah, but women were not allowed to be served. Really? Did you, yeah. Karen DeCrow, I believe that is one of our foremothers in New York. Uh, we began a liberation of bars. This is now after the Solomon event. Uh, 
liberation of bars in those days meant that you would go into a bar and demand to be served. You demanded to be served because that public liquor license said that they had to serve the public. Mm -hmm. It didn't say we only have the license to serve men. Right. So we made a demand. We are part of the public, and we demand to be served. McSorley's Bar was a real macho bar in the East Village, I think it was, and it had kind of sawdust on the floor, one toilet, and uh, Karen DeCrow and a group of the now women would go in and um, beer. Uh, demanded to be served at McSorley's. It upset some of the customers so much that one standing next to Karen took his glass of beer and poured it over her head. Wow. Yeah. But we did a lot of liberation of bars. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, once I got involved with now, we did demonstrations on Wall Street. Um, and some of this is, this is from 1971. Yeah, when we're when we're finished, we'll take um, some photographs of these articles so that I can. That's me. <laughs> With the fist up, yep. like the sunglasses. No. Let's try to show the camera real quick. It's gonna get right no, in front this, of your face. This arm. Oh, I'm sorry. It's the. And those are all men making all kinds of sexist slurs. <laughs> the lady next to me um, was one of the now women. And. Uh, this was lunchtime. There's a stock exchange. And let's see. Here's some more. Oh, great. No, I can get And there's really the woman power the woman power banner mm -hmm. that often uh, was paraded in New York. Uh, yeah. You were all over the newspaper. Well, that was big, big stuff. Yeah. And this was, uh, you know, um, yeah. Standing at the bar of Tom Brown's restaurant, Doris Rush, remember her? Raised a tall, tinkly glass of vodka and tonic to her lips yesterday and drank daintily. It wasn't exactly an intimate moment. Doris was being crushed against the bar by a noisy mob of friends, customers, newsmen, and waitresses. But Dolores's deliberate slip was a minor victory for women's lib. <laughs> Tom Brown, Tim Brown's restaurant at 146 Pearl Street had aroused the ire of New York's Valkyries sure. because they alleged women were denied service at the bar during lunch times. Give him a drink, he told bartender Farina, his brother. The reason we have men only at the bar is because they make reservations to stand there. Nonsense. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Come on now. But in any case... But that also means that's where the power brokering is happening, right? I mean, that's these are right. where the deals are made. That's right. And at the same day, we had demonstrations in Washington at the House of Representatives for the ERA. Yeah, and, we'll be then, sure to. and here's John. He's the now representative speaks. The other guy on the left is his brother Donald. The Can University I hold this up of, in front of your face again. <laughs> 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 Just so we can have a quick shot of the Arkansas traveler. <laughs> and John right now. My dad went to college in Arkansas. Oh, Fayetteville. He went to, uh, to, no, he went to Hendrix, and then um, Very close to Conroe. Conway. Conway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's what was going on in the early 70s. In preparation for these demonstrations on the 26th of August, mm -hmm. uh, and we were both active, I mean, he was first, um, and then I got involved with New York, New York Now. 
and there was a lot of counseling going on in preparation for these demonstrations. Uh, one is don't wear pierced earrings just in case you're pushed and shoved and people pull your ears. In those days, telephone charges cost 10 cents, and we had 10 cents in our shoes, mm -hmm. plus also telephone numbers for attorneys in case we were arrested. There were certain things I wouldn't do. Uh, there was a demonstration, remember, on the floor of the, I think it was the American Stock Exchange, where certain feminists got into the visitor's gallery and tore up uh, dollars and then let them dribble to the floor. Uh, that one I wouldn't do. I thought it was too sensitive for my working in investment banking. So that's at least the beginning of my activism and feminism. Mm -hmm. uh, I never told much to my parents, they are living in northeastern Pennsylvania, because after one of, or during one of these demonstrations, it might, might have been that one, uh, but the press came up and said, what are you women fighting for? And there was just a line from, I think it was Susan B. Anthony, the men their rights and nothing more, the women their rights and nothing less. And my father, the story is my father's driving home from the village across the way. He hears my voice on on radio. He <laughs> runs home to my mother and he says, your daughter is on radio. <laughs> I like how parents do that. You know? <laughs> your daughter. Your son. Well, we do that now. It's your cat. It's right. your cat that right. did it. <laughs> yeah. You're the one who's responsible for this. But you had already been involved with now for quite some time, John? I don't know if I could say quite some time, a year. Well, you were almost at the founding. What brought you in? Um, the misfeasance, nonfeasance, and malfeasance of the federal agency I worked for. Oh dear, really? <laughs> they didn't enforce the law very properly, in my opinion. In fact, they refused to uh, do the part um, for women in the affirmative action programs. Mm -hmm. That was later changed. I, I later transferred to the Washington, D.C. area, and uh, I lived in, on Capitol Hill, so there was a Capitol Hill chapter of now, yes. uh, and I uh, I went to it because the other one was way downtown or something, and I didn't know until later, but they had, uh, at that time there was a lot of phobia against the, the lesbians in, in now, they didn't want them in now, uh, they thought it would do something uh, Betty Ferdinand was involved in this too. They, they, they didn't want to. Uh, the word to get out there was a bunch of lesbians. It was called the Lavender Scare. Yes. And, and uh, it just happened that the Capitol Hill chapter of now was primarily lesbians. <laughs> and and they, they were looking for somebody uh, to run. I don't know if they asked you were you there. I don't know. But well, I think it was you first. They asked me if I would president. I guess the shoe that they weren't biased against men. <laughs> and I did. And I was well, the well, president well, for, for a year. But remember, one of the arguments that you always made was that the name is the National Organization for Women, not of Women. Not of women. That's yes. true. Yes. And, uh, and the thing that I remember the most about the whole uh, year was that there was a march on Constitution Avenue. It was Constitution, right? Mm -hmm. What was it? I think it was Constitution. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I remember that the, the, the police told us, well, what will let you do is we'll march, we'll let you march on one side. On the sidewalk? No, no, on one side of the street. Oh. Mm -hmm. And um, so then people started gathering. And at that time, and I remember that primarily for the thing, it was kind of summerish, I guess. Mm -hmm. I got a white linen suit and trousers, and it's still upstairs somewhere. Where it is. But it's still upstairs. Wasn't almost and, everyone wearing white in that march? I think there was a lot of white. Uh, but uh, You remember what year that was? I was in the, the center of the thing, and we were about the third group marching. Mm -hmm. Probably because it started with a C. And uh, I was in there, Carol was in there, and a couple of our friends were in there. Was this it? 78. 78? Okay. Yep. And I made the sashes, sashes, the white, the gold, yes. and... But I remember as we started marching down the street, there were so many of us that we kind of took over the whole street. 
<laughs> and, and as we were marching, there were a lot of people on the sidelines. And as the Capitol 